With just one day to spare, Congress passed a short-term spending bill last night that avoids a government shutdown. The bill now heads to the president's desk. The legislation keeps the government open through mid-February. Only one Republican, Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, joined all Democrats to pass the funding bill in the House. But in the Senate, the vote was bipartisan, with 69 senators, including Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, voting to pass the continuing resolution. I am glad that in the end, cooler heads prevailed. The government will stay open. And I thank the members of this chamber for walking us back from the brink of an avoidable, needless, and costly shutdown. Congress didn't reach the agreement without some obstacles earlier in the day. Republicans in the House and the Senate made an effort to delay uh, passage of the spending bill over objections to the Biden administration's COVID-19 vaccination mandates for larger companies. Here's what Speaker Nancy Pelosi had to say about those attempts. We all have a responsibility to make sure that the government functions. I don't think that the Republicans in the Senate want to shut down government. Uh, I don't know that they would even have the votes to do so. Uh, but it is yet again a double a double sense of irresponsibility. First of all, they'd shut down government, and then they'd shut down science. Okay, so Garrett, what, what was happening there? We're trying to set, shut down science. Um, shutting down explain science. Explain to our viewers what the Republicans were trying to do. Uh, and also, how long is the government open now? What's the next deadline? Uh, the next deadline will be in mid to late February. February 18th is the new deadline. For Republicans, this is actually a pretty strategic thing here. They are still funding the government at Trump administration levels. Right. Every time they do one of these CRs, they kick the can a little bit further down the road mm -hmm. in the hopes that eventually you get a Republican-controlled House, and then you've got a federal, you know, full year budget potentially, it yeah. looks a lot more like what they'd want to see. So that's the strategic play for Republicans there. What we saw yesterday was a small group of mostly Senate Republicans who had the power, but cheered on by the House Freedom Caucus, who wanted to push for a vote to defund President Biden's vaccine and testing mandates for businesses. They had some moral support from others in the in the caucus, the Republican caucus, but by and large, most Senate Republicans knew this was, as John Cornyn put it, the wrong hostage to take. It was bad politically. It made them look like they were willing to shut down the government over, a, a, over an ideological issue. And it turned into a fight that lasted all day long yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Michael Steele. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, Washington drama right before Christmas and everybody, you know, <laughs> let's go to the brink. And it's a proud tradition. <laughs> right. Okay. We're going to get to the cliff. We're going to look over and, and then we're going to go, OK, latte, anybody? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I, so I guess what's the end game here? Because you got to come back and do this in February. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're going to be Is in that the political timing? cycle next year. All right. Everybody's going to be in their primaries and stuff. Yeah. Where, where do Republicans think this ultimately leads them in terms of the governing aspect of, yeah, you got to address, the, you still have to pay, pay the piper come oh, February. Absolutely. And I think cooler heads did eventually prevail. This was Mitch McConnell's line all week, but this was not something worth shutting the government down over because Republicans are going to get another vote on this vaccine mandate defunding issue next week. There's a whole other mechanism that's going to come up next week where Republicans can register their disapproval. But as we saw during the Trump administration, sometimes the whole point is just to look like you're fighting. Right. This was Mike Lee, Roger Marshall, so, a new Republican senator from Kansas, who wanted to be out there showing that they were fighting on this issue that they feel like is very important to their voters, knowing full well they didn't have the votes. What ultimately broke this down last night was Democrats did a head count and they realized some Republicans didn't just have jet fumes. They had already left town. They were short a couple of Republican senators <laughs> last night. Game to go so to. They, it, was, yeah, it, was, it was important so stuff. Even if Joe Manchin had decided to cross over and join them, they didn't have the votes. Democrats did the math. They said, okay, you guys want a 50 vote threshold? Let's do it. Okay. You don't have 50 people in Washington right now. Patty. Um, you know, Michael's right. We do this so regularly in this country. It's yeah. almost got to the stage where I'm, I'm sure most of the audience out there, the country out there is thinking, mm -hmm. oh yeah, there's Washington yeah. again. This is what they do. Is there any chance we could get to a position where the country acts more healthily and doesn't do this on a regular basis? I've covered one actual shutdown, but like dozens of almost shutdowns. Mm -hmm. I'm bored of them. I'm sure the country's bored of them. It's not good for the country. Any way that America could kind of grow up and do this better? <laughs> so is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> 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 you know the answer. Oh, you're the 50,000. 
got some sort of big thinker around the table. So. Uh, no, the answer is no. No. no we're, we'll be in the <laughs> time, thank we'll you. Be in the, we'll be in this uh, in perpetuity. This is just the way politics are. Um, Particularly with the narratives. I will say, the only thing right. that was interesting to me about this one, and I, I didn't find it that interesting, no offense, but <laughs> it wasn't because we all knew the outcome, right? The only thing that was interesting to me was to, was what it portended for next year, when yeah. Republicans mm -hmm. likely yes. will control mm -hmm. both chambers of Congress. Then they're going to actually be able to make these types of demands and extractions, or Joe Biden will have to sit there and say, no, I'm going to veto right. this. Right, right, and right. Those are when you really do have prolonged shutdowns. I right. mean, we've had a couple shutdowns already. Uh, there were several in the uh, Trump era. There were several mm -hmm. in the Obama era. Um, so, I, I, you know, you, that's, that, that, that was interesting to me is how, just to ascertain how much the White House will be willing to fight for things like the ability to do a vaccine mandate, which, mind you, is already mired in quirk challenges. So this was sort of a moot point well, to begin with. Well, also, right. scientifically, so. vaccine mandates have shown to work. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.